Assalamu alaikum. My name is Samla Salim and uh, today's our topic of discussion for this webinar is reinforcement learning. Uh, here is a short agenda for discussion. We will discuss about the background and introduction about RL. What is deep view learning? Uh, policy gradients. What are the fundamentals of RL? MDP and some challenges related to reinforcement learning. Okay, let's start from uh, uh, an example why we need re reinforcement learning to and what, what kind of so problems can we solve using RL. So suppose you have uh, three different scenarios. Uh, you can see one, two, and three on your screen. Okay. But it is showing that uh, you have three job offers from three different companies, three well-known companies. So you are offered a, a pay of 250k dollar from Facebook with uh, a rate of uh, increment of 10% after three years. But you have a probability to quit the job of 40%. Likewise, for Google, you are offered 200k with a raise of 20% after three years, but the probability to quit the job is 25%. And same goes for the third job, Amazon, you have some different figures for that as well. So now there's very, very uncertainty about the raises and uh, about quitting offer of the job. So how someone can choose among the three? Can, can anyone answer? If there is someone in the webinar, okay, no one, no one can. Uh, so this is a problem with uncertainty in the answer. This is kind of problems where we use reinforcement learning for the solution. What is the purpose uh, behind sorting the solution? Is you want to get maximum reward after three years, with given this uncertainty and given this initial raise. So RL will help you to compute the maximum reward, maximum output, given the states, given the current states, given some conditions, given some transition probability. Okay. Uh, so, okay, what is Q learning? This is the very basic uh, concept of reinforcement learning. So Q learning is basically your algorithm or function that map your features to your reward given some specific actions. How does it work is you, you use the greedy approach, greedy algorithm to reach the, to the maximum reward. It's a concept somehow related to the AI algorithms. So what you do, an agent is basically, uh, agent will explore the environment and check which actions should it take to get the highest reward? Epsilon is basically the hyperparameter in your reinforcement learning algorithm. Uh, I have specified the range over here. So can anyone of you tell me if you replicate this concept to deep learning, what is Epsilon and deep learning? Uh, okay, I repeat. Okay, I, I, I was telling there is a parameter epsilon in your RL technique, there is a specified range for it. And you cannot make it zero, but you can change it according to your progress. Uh, there is a specific name for progress of your reward states. I will tell you, I will tell you later about the specific terminologies, but can you relate it to the deep learning concept? What would be epsilon parameter, hyper parameter in your deep learning model? You are using it to converge your agent and convergence means you are trying to get the maximum reward with minimum actions. Okay, okay. So you can easily relate it to the learning rate of your algorithm and not algorithm your network okay so epsilon is actually learning rate and deep learning what you do is you do you, you perform your action after each step instead of completing the entire episode again it is replicating a concept of deep learning i have mentioned it in a bracket as in case of the policy gradient method so 
I will again ask you people what is step and what is episode and deep learning concept because it will help you to memorize it better than if you related with the deep learning concepts. So, and uh, you know the concepts of deep learning? Yes, I do. Okay, can you tell me what is a batch or what is iteration? Sorry, come again. What is a batch? What is batch and what is iteration? Okay, so uh, yeah, the iteration is the number of uh, times we run our uh, optimization algorithm or any algorithm. And the batch is the number of training examples that we are using. Uh, okay, so now, now let me explain or relate it with the deep learning concept. I will rephrase it. Performs a learning action after each iteration instead of complete batch. So it will be understandable for you now. I'm going to the next slide. Uh, so there is a, a short difference between traditional queue learning and RL based queue learning. So the basic difference was, the very basic difference was in traditional queue learning, we were having only limited number of sets and actions. So that means you can make a static structure to keep your number of sets corresponding to the number of actions. Okay, it's, I think it's simple. For that purpose, we were only using a Python dictionary structure that is key value pair. In comparison to that, if I talk about deep queue learning structure, that is continuous. Like you have infinite number of possibilities for your actions given states, and you have infinite states as well. So for that purpose, you cannot use any static structure, any data structure, you need neural network for that to get continuous values in, in limited sets. So in short, you have continuous states and actions in deep queue learning, while the traditional learning methods have only limited number of sets. Uh, again, there are some uh, taxonomy related to the deep queue learning network. Uh, it is as it is related to the concept of agents in AI. So you must have heard about the state action reward. It, basically, in the memory of the agent, there are four different parameters that are states, action, and reward. Uh, you can see two uh, S values in the memory that represent the different states, real and the final states. And, uh, I have written a point in the, uh, on the first line that is deep Q neural networks are universal. The universal function means that they are not limited to some set of the values these functions can be applied to a continuous domain. Uh, the loss, loss calculation of this network as we do in the neural network. Uh, and we use softmax. I have some details in the later slides. A uh, key thing to take away from here is that in Q learning, you have two neural networks at the same time. And uh, they are named as Q evaluation and Q target. So uh, there is a difference between both of these networks. What do they actually perform in a network? So what Q evaluation do? Q evaluation just let tell you which action to take during the current state. And Q target is to compute the maximum reward given any action. Okay, so uh, which model will operate first according to their functionalities? Okay, uh, I will complete it myself. Uh, first of all, Q evaluation will work because you have state. You will get all the possible um, possibilities of action you can. Okay, Q evaluation will work first because you are in a state and you will get all the possible actions you can do to move to the next state. And Q target will evaluate which action you should actually take to maximize the reward. Okay, uh, here goes uh, a question that why do we need two networks? Because as all of us know, training requires a lot of time, resources, as well as data. So 
why we are using two networks because we want to reduce the biases of the action and the second point is we update the target weights with evaluation weights that means evaluation weights are affecting your target weight so uh, i am again asking you that which concept of deep learning is related to the target and evaluation network and which two networks are simultaneously affecting each other so here comes the uh, some the some implementation details whenever you have an environment if it's images you will use cnn to get the features and you will follow all the concepts of deep learning will flatten and get a dense layer to calculate the actions okay but if your environment has movement and at how you will deal with it uh, this is a question for the audience uh, did you people get my question if your environment has a movement can you apply this algorithm i told you in this in these steps get features from cnn flatten it and then pass to your dense layer to calculate actions so what if your environment has a movement how you will operate on it can you design a algorithm for if you have an environment with a movement you cannot see tell where is the movement can you tell me with a single image where is the movement in this image no one can tell so whenever you want to deal with some problem having movement you need to have a set of number a number of images that means you need to have a stack okay you will input your stack of frames to your network and you will get whatever your answer is okay so input your cnn will be simply a batch of images and your action will be dependent on the value of the random number now what is this random number this random generated number will is is having two condition if it is less than epsilon or greater than epsilon if it's less than epsilon value it will do a random action otherwise it will do a greedy action uh, here a question should arise the what is a random action or what is a greedy action a greedy action is a, a jump to the that where you think you can get the maximum reward it without thinking without calculating about the later stages you just immediately thought moving from 1 to 2 will give you maximum reward and you know the all the states well a random action is you chose to move from 0 to 3 and you are out of whatever the reward is okay so i'm again repeating the steps of the algorithm will pass a stack of frames to your enn and enn will give you all the possible actions you can uh, perform in a current state now you will choose the action state action pair that is giving you maximum output and which network is going to help you in this your target network is going to do that for you okay you are going to repeat the same process again and again you will get new frames you will again compute the actions and you will again perform the maximum reward function Uh, i have attached a screenshot for implementation of virtual uh, learning algorithm i am the my uh, this concept my just to check that uh, is it a really a uh, uh, complex algorithm or research implementation related to the deep learning so there were certain dependencies requirement on it i have listed down it here and i trained this network on a for few box you can see the focus over here i did it myself i have a screenshot of uh, some place holders so what it is showing you that synthetically is 99% the same most 100% the same as in the deep learning just using the different concepts as you can see you are you can see there is input of action target so you are just you have you just have redefined your concept but you are using same lines 
even when you are using the CNN to get the features. Obviously, you're going to change your CNN layers. You're not going to rewrite it. You will use, you will import the same layers. Uh, so there was a, a training time required to train a Qlearning algorithm. Model which I ran on system was requiring uh, 5 million episodes. Here an episode means a batch of frames, a stack of frames. So I was only able to complete only 1% of episodes and 12 hours on my to gb laptop. So I didn't complete uh, the whole episode. So uh, it's all very good. Here is another method for RF with policy gradient. So what is policy uh, is just a distribution of probability of distribution of all the actions that agent can take. For example, you have 10 actions. So, so what will be the policy? The policy that is giving you the probability that you can take action zero uh, with the chance of nine and other silly whenever you perform and back some parameters and feature returns and feature returns will basically help you to back propagate in your network and these feature returns are your weights and reinforcement learning okay i'm moving to the next slide okay here comes a uh, difference between the q learning and policy gradient method both of them are derived from the basic concept of markov decision construct uh, the both operate in the environment but the very basic and simple difference between them and q learning is designed for sample and for policy gradient is designed for complex environments these are some of the fundamentals of uh, rl so basically the algorithm is designed using the computer vision and it requires a huge amount of data so some of the challenges of this problems are how you have to gather huge amount of data and how you are going to build it because uh, uh, this is clear this was clearly mentioned in their book yet you have to manually label all the data so conclusively this is not as intelligent as a human because a human might not need to see a number of examples to memorize an object. Okay, so what is RL? RL basically operates in your environment. So the factors in your environment are the ingredients of your RL algorithm. Okay, so the actions performed are the changes which have some probability calculated from our feature returns, from our state action chair, from our application algorithm policy gradients and policies what is mdp mdp is actually a sequence of state is a result of some previous state and action then it is called mdp and your next state is only dependent on the previous state so you can imagine uh, the connectivity between the units of states if your states are dependent on the previous states then it's part of MDP. I have a very simple example for R of RL for you here. Uh, suppose you're playing a fighting game or a firing game. So uh, you, uh, all of you know you will be restricted to some particular actions. You can move right, left, up, down. You can uh, kick or punch some, some activities. There will be limited number of activities. So whenever you uh, will, uh, you have to perform an action, there is a probability distribution over there. There is never a probability that you will get that this action will be performed and that's 100%. So there will be a distribution of your probability. Uh, the agent works on two things, that is reward and penalty. Uh, a very uh, a summarized line written here is that the design of the reward is the most critical thing because all of the algorithm is working on the maximum reward value. 
rewards we are always moving towards the maximum reward so that design of reward is most critical to make an uh, efficient rl algorithm uh here comes the explore exploit uh dilemma so uh we just stated uh, that we have to get the probability then based on maximum reward but just think you are not considering the later stages of your uh, algorithm or your reward you are just thinking about the current state and uh, making a decision on it so it is uh, a challenge to handle in rl that is last reward that is being referred to uh, only current state a long term reward is referring actually referring to might be after 10 state what would be the reward after 10 state so if i uh, make it more clear uh, what it is actually saying in simple words that i don't i am not considering if i am going to state to one from the current state what will be the reward after 10 state i might get choose a wrong direction in current state and later i will uh, in, and in all the later stages followed by this reward i will get the penalty values penalty values penalty values that will keep on adding that means i am lost to some non convergence point of my algorithm so uh, it is recommended in rl algorithm never do not ever uh, stick to your uh, maximum reward value some sometime you have to choose the uh, sometime you have to choose the random value do not always follow the greedy approach because you might get better rewards in some random action pair rather than greedy action pair i think this was uh, oh no i have some more to share okay there are types of algorithm in rl rl there are two types of algorithm basically the basic difference is in one you have some environment and in the second you do not have any environment but both algorithms both the learning methods that we discussed uh, in the previous slides both are environment free they just keep track of the state and learn their environment with the time and the q learning is uh, the statistical method so it operates with a tabular structure while the deep u learning is continuous so we need neural network to operate on the continuous values uh, that's all from my side uh, plus i have some i did some research on the problems related to rl so there there is uh, there isn't any different problem for rl the same problems we are uh, solving in our different labs and different modules like face recognition video captioning uh, forgery problems uh, and many more you can all, all of them can solve using our approach so the environment is not always that you have a particular agent that is or like that it's just a concept that you have to map maximize your rewards and you have to compute the features and your agent is operating agent is basically your main function or your model so uh, this is all from my side if you people have any question you can ask me ma'am i think there is no question from the audience uh, thank you it was nice but uh... Uh, okay thank you i audience already know much about it so i don't think i have any question thank you for listening thank you ma'am thank you thank you very much